I do hope you have seen and understood our earlier video on fluoroscopic guided PCNL puncture. This video will focus on supine PCNL and we will find out if the puncture in supine PCNL is any different from prone. Now this is a typical prone patient with the surgeon standing on one side. Let us see what happens when we turn the patient supine. The patient has been turned supine and this is a modified Valdivia Galdakau position with the patient at 30 degrees to the horizontal. The kidney obviously has come to the opposite side as must the surgeon. However, the point I want to emphasize is that in a supine PCNL, we aim for the lateral calyces and not necessarily the posterior calyx. For the sake of simplicity, let me remove the vertebra and the opposite kidney. In a supine PCNL, we want the needle parallel to the floor in order to get maximum freedom for the nephroscope to move once we are inside the kidney. For the first puncture, let me assume that we are pointing at the correct depth. As the tip of the actual needle reaches the tip of the calyx in the patient, what we see on the fluoroscopy screen is the tip of the needle pointing at the edge of the calyx. Now we have said that we are at the correct puncture. So when we turn from 0 to 30 degrees towards the surgeon, this relationship between the tip of the needle and the edge of the calyx is maintained. Next, let us look at a needle that is going superficial to the kidney. At 0 degrees, the needle tip has reached the edge of the calyx. Once we turn the C arm to 30 degrees, the shadow of the needle is falling on the body of the calyx. When we look at the fluoroscopy screen, what we see is an appearance of the needle having crossed beyond the edge of the calyx. Allow me to introduce one more concept here. You can decide on how superficial you are as compared to the kidney. If the needle has gone way across the edge of the calyx, you are more superficial. If the needle is relatively closer to your calyx at 30 degrees, then you are less superficial. Now let us see what happens when the needle is pointing deep to the calyx. At 0 degrees, we get the familiar picture of the needle tip touching the edge of the calyx. At 30 degrees, some X-ray beams escape between the calyx and the tip of the needle. This appears as a space between the needle tip and the edge of the calyx on the fluoroscopy screen. Another way of putting it would be to say that the needle has not reached the edge of the calyx. Again, an estimate of the depth can be made by looking at the distance between the tip of the needle and the edge of the calyx. The deeper you are, the more the distance. As you come less deep to the calyx, the distance between the tip of the needle and the edge of the calyx comes down. However, remember that minor adjustments are important and your needle tip must be pointing exactly at the edge if you want to be in the correct place. Therefore, the analysis of the fluoroscopy image remains the same. Whether you do a supine PCNL or a prone PCNL, this equation does not change. Would an end-on puncture be possible in supine PCNL. 
Theoretically, this should not be a problem. However, remember the needle has to be horizontal to the floor. This means that your C arm would have to come to a complete 90 degrees and be almost horizontal. Ergonomically, this may be an issue. That brings me to the end of the video on PCNL puncture. We would love to hear your comments, queries and suggestions for possible improvements in further videos. Thank you and greetings from NU Hospitals, Bangalore.